for the last video of the day um, and hopefully I can get all of it in because I'm pretty sure my memory is about full. We are in a place called Yanaizu and Yanaizu is famous for the temple which I am standing uh, on the temple grounds at the moment looking down over the bridges there. Um, it's famous for the temple and for the festival that happens on the 7th on Jan January 7th of every year called the Hadaka Matsuri or for those of us who have been here before we call it the Naked Man. Now some of you have heard about the Naked Man, those of you who haven't heard about the Naked Man, it's not exactly what you think it is. See, it's January 7th, which means there's a bunch of snow on the ground. It's really frickin' freezing Mr. Bigglesworth, thank you Austin Powers. And what happens for the festival is, guys only by the way, they wear, they take off everything, all of their clothes, and they're allowed to put on uh, a fundoshi, which is just a little tie up to, you know, hide your private parts. And then when the temple bell rings, from all over the town, they come running through the streets and people are throwing water on them. They wear no socks, no shoes, no nothing. People throw water on them and they all come racing toward the temple. When they come racing toward the temple, as you can see, they have to come up the stairs, no matter if they come from this direction or from other directions. And of course, you know, like I said, it's the middle of January. So, the stairs are slippery, people are still throwing water, etc. all over the place. And they have to run, run, run up to the top here to get to the temple proper. And once they get to the temple proper, nice temple by the way, they have to get inside. We're still running up here. Now, for the festival, then, once they get in here and everybody has to get cramped up in here, then the idea is to climb up that rope right there and get to the top into the rafters of the temple proper. If you can do that, then your wish for the year, your dream, whatever it is you want to accomplish, will come true, is the story. Now, you gotta imagine, up in that space, there's probably about three, 300, 350 different people, bunch of different guys, all trying to get to the top of that rope at the same time. So a lot of people, when they hear about the naked man, the first thing they think of, well, of course, is sex. But in reality, it's more about trying to accomplish your dreams. If you can get up to the top of that rope, then you've done something spectacular. Running through the streets of a town in the middle of the mountains in the beginning of January, wearing absolutely nothing, nothing to help you, no shoes, no gloves, nothing. Just you against the elements and 350 other guys trying to get to the top of that temple bell rope. That's the Hadaka Matsuri. But now, to finish out today, we are on in a real temple. Monks live here. They take care of this. Now, because of the earthquake and whatnot, you can see that they've started to uh, put together some guard posts to protect certain things from uh, falling apart. Now, the reason, excuse me, these guard posts are still active is because there have been aftershocks. Um, there have been, since I've been here in country uh, since Sunday, there's been about five different aftershocks in this area, uh, in the northern area alone. They haven't been big, but there have been aftershocks. Now, here is something um, that's kind of sort of interesting. Um, this is probably what Old Testament Christians will say is extremely sacrilege because uh, it is a bull monument to a god of some sort. And the idea is that wherever on your body you want to make better, whether if you have a bum leg or a bum back or, or maybe you want to be smarter or something, you come and you say a little prayer and then you touch the idol wherever it is you want to be better. So let's say you want to have more intelligence, you touch the head, maybe you're having an eye problem, maybe you're having a knee problem, okay? Maybe you're having a shoulder problem. That's what that is here for, okay? But if you can listen, you can listen just a little bit. Maybe they'll do it again. Some people are ringing the gong inside the temple proper. No, they're praying. 
It's a very nice place. And oh, what do I see over there? Even in a place like this, even in such a religious and spiritual place like this, who is that hiding in the corner? <laughs> There's our boy Akabeko. There he is again. Let's see if we can get him to agree with me. Hey Akabeko, is Aizu a good place to come? I think he agrees. <laughs> you hear them ringing the temple bell in there? Trying to wake up the gods? Speaking of which, last thing for the day hopefully. That up there is the big time temple bell. That is what they would use, uh, that is still what they use to call for different services and whatnot for the monks. So the monks know what time it is, time to pray, time to eat, time to sleep, etc. That is also where they ring the bell every New Year's. Uh, they ring each bell 108 times. There we go. 108 times for the 108 different sins that Buddhism believes human beings commit in their lives. So they ring the temple bell for 108 different sins to purify all the humans at the beginning of every year. One more place to go here because, you know, there's, it's a temple, so there's lots of stairs and lots of buildings for different reasons. If you really want to see, if you really want to see all that stuff, you're going to have to come on your own because I'm not going to show it to you for free. There's our purifying water that we have to use to purify ourselves before we go into the temple proper, but I'm not going into the temple proper. I'm going to take you over here to the edge. Mm, the smell of incense is wonderful in a temple. And I'm going to show you this picture from back here. I'm going to show you this view from over here. Look at this. Talk about your views. Oh my holy lord. Now I've heard, and, and if you take a look at the river, you'll see... Um, this area and area a little farther south uh, called Tadami recently had a whole lot of rain. And the rivers flooded over and there was lots of runoff down the hills and whatnot. That river used to be sparkling clean. Right now it's muddy and ugly. In fact, this, uh, the river and any other waterways basically in Japan, the Japanese people are very proud because they keep these things very, very clean. And that, folks, is all mud and runoff from the recent torrential rains. But it's still a beautiful sight. And there's the entrance to the temple. Now, Obon is coming up. I talked about Obon a little bit in a previous posting, so I won't talk about it here. But Obon is the only time you will see the different colored... Um, what do I want to call them? Just kind of... Uh, I don't want to call them... I don't know what I want to call them. Just different colored um, displays, I guess. Okay? You see, you can see them all over the place. The paper lanterns are being hung up. So, on the last night of Obon, this place is going to be filled with people praying to their ancestors, dancing together, etc. And that will happen next week. Too bad I won't be here, because that would be something cool to see. All right. Uh, I am coming to the end of my battery and to the end of my memory. So, that was my Thursday. This evening, I'm going to go back to Aikido. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to pay a little visit to, not all the way out to the coast, but we're going to come close to see some of the damage that happened uh, because of the tsunami and the earthquake. So... We won't be there long because heaven knows the uh, U.S. government would be a little bit upset if I was inside the radiation zone for too long. So we won't be there long, but we're going to go, we're going to look, we're going to take a few videos, we're going to get out, we're going to come back, and then that'll be the end of my Friday. So have a good one.